Hi guys, welcome to the Ardor server. So today we have here a Dell PowerEdge R630 server and in this server I have these guys. So this is a Samsung SM1625 enterprise grade SAS2 SSD. And if you look closely here, there is an EMC part number. And that's because these SSDs came out of an EMC enterprise grade uh, storage system and you can often find drives like this on eBay for a pretty good value when it comes to cost per gigabyte. However, one of the issues with a drive like this is that they're often formatted with non-standard sector sizes. And so instead of having a 512 byte sector size or 4K sector size, something like this might have a 520 byte sector size, a 524 byte sector size, or a 528 byte sector size. Now these non-standard sector sizes will effectively prevent this SSD from working in a normal server like this when you're running a typical operating system like a Linux or BSD derived OS or even Windows. So today I'm gonna to show you how to reformat the sector sizes on a drive like this so that they can be used in a normal server running your typical OS. Now you might be asking yourself, okay, well, why would I not just buy a drive that already has a standard sector size? Well, precisely because drives like this cannot work out of the box in a normal server, a lot of sellers on eBay and elsewhere are not able to sell these drives as is. They might be able to sell them to someone who already has an enterprise storage system and they're replacing a failed uh, identical drive, but otherwise you cannot just pop this drive into a normal server and start using them. And so if you can arm yourself with the knowledge of how to reformat and resize the sectors on a drive like this so that you can use them in a normal system, you can often find yourself a really good deal on storage drives like this on eBay. All right, so let's go ahead and log into this machine and show you how to do that. All right, here I am logged into the server with root privileges. First, let's take a look at the Samsung SSDs we have. So as you can see, we have three Samsung SM1625 SSDs. Now, let me show you the problem. Oh, and by the way, here's a trick of the trade in Linux. If you're trying to diagnose a storage problem in a Linux system with an LSI controller, this command will show you all the LSI driver, SCSI layer, and block device layer messages. If you have a storage problem, usually these messages will tell you what the problem is. If you wanna learn more about how to inspect your hardware in Linux, check out my video on that subject. Okay, so let's go ahead and check these out. Here we go. As you can see right here, these drives have 520 byte sectors and are unsupported. So we're not able to use these SSDs right now. In order to fix this problem, we're going to need a set of tools known as the SG utilities. So let me first show you how to get those tools. If you're using a CentOS 7 system like me, all you have to do is run the yum install sg3 underscore utils command and confirm to install the package. The sg utilities are already part of the base OS repository. For example, you can see that I have the sg readcap command, which is part of this package. And I can show you that this is part of the SG3 utils package. Which is installed from the base repository. Now, one issue with the bundled SG3 utils package is that it's usually a little bit older than what is currently available. If for some reason you need the latest version, for example, because you've encountered a bug that is fixed in the latest release, then you need to go download it directly from the project's website. I'll leave this URL in the video description if you need it, but from here we click on the SG3 utils, and you can see that the latest version is 1.45, which is a little bit newer than the 1.37 that we currently have. 
Now, if you don't see the packages for your OS, click on the link here. And click on download and build. Here you'll be able to find packages for both RPMs and Debian as well as Windows. So if you need any of these packages, just download it and install it. Now let's get back to fixing those odd sector sizes. As you may have noticed just a moment ago, in order to use the SG utilities, you need the SCSI generic or SG device file name. You can find this with the lsSCSI command like this. So the listing in the last column on the right are the SG device uh, files. Now, if you're not using Linux, you can still find the SG device files by using the SG scan command like this. Let's work with the first one, which is slash dev slash SG zero. Just as we saw earlier, you can use the SG read cap command to see the current sector size or block length like this. As we already saw, the current sector size is 520 bytes. So normally I would say let's reformat this with the usual 512 byte sectors. However, let me show you one other thing. Take a look at this. It looks like these Samsung SSDs are natively 8K sectors. So we can squeeze a little bit more performance out of these SSDs by trading off a little bit of space efficiency and reformatting them to 4K sector sizes instead. So this is how we do that. Now, if you wanted to format this to 512 byte sectors, you would simply replace the 4096 with 512. Okay, so the program is going to give us an opportunity to bail out since this is a data destructive process, but we're fine with it, so we'll just wait and proceed. This process does take quite a long time, even for a 400 gigabyte SSD, so I'll let this finish its course and come back when it's done. Looks like we're now done. That process took about 18 minutes. So at this point, I'm going to physically restart the drive by pulling it out and reinserting it into the server. Meanwhile, let's keep an eye out on the logs. Okay, I'll be right back. So we can see that the drive came back with uh, 4096 byte sectors and it is now perfectly usable. So that's pretty much it. Now one thing I do want to point out here, sometimes this reformatting process isn't as straightforward as we just saw. Sometimes you need to zero out the drive before you reformat it for a different sector size. This can be done by first running the SG format command without changing the original sector size and then rerunning the SG format with the new sector size. Also, some devices require the use of the old 6 byte CDB instead of the default 10 byte that is used by the SG utilities. In this case, there is a dash dash six option to enable the use of the 6 byte CDBs. I don't have anything here that requires these special steps, but I just wanted to mention them in case you run into those kind of issues, you can search the internet for the details on how to try those alternative methods. Hey guys, one more thing I want to point out to you, these drives that require the sector size reformatting oftentimes behave differently when it comes to the activity LEDs. You'll notice that the activity LED here is solid green. They do flicker with activity, so they do work, but normally the activity LED is off and then turns on green and flickers with activity. So there is that one difference. I'm not really sure why that is, but in my experience, that's often the case. So I just wanted to point that out and make you aware of that in case you do get some of these and notice that, that difference. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this video helps you guys out. 
and hopefully this also gives you some options when you're shopping around for storage. This was actually one of the most highly requested videos and I really appreciate you guys sending in your video suggestions so thank you very much for that. I'm really glad that I finally got the opportunity to do this. I was really just kind of waiting for a chance to get my hands on some drives where I could actually demonstrate this on video for you. All right, so if you like this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and you like this sort of stuff, be sure to subscribe. Also, if you want to support my channel, check out my eBay store for some awesome server parts. I'll leave a link down in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and have a great day. Bye-bye.